Good morning, everybody, and welcome to day four, the final leg of my ride from California back home to Dallas Fort Worth. Have you ever seen a more beautiful sunrise than this one on I-20 East headed to Dallas? I want to welcome you back to Cruise Man's Moto Vlogs. Today I'm riding from Midland, Texas to Dallas, Fort Worth where I live. And this is the fourth in a series of videos where I rode the bike from California uh, first day to Tempe, Arizona. Second day was to uh, Socorro, I'm sorry, yeah, Socorro, New Mexico. Third day I rode to Midland, Texas, where I spent the night with my brother. And this morning I just left. I left at 6 o'clock this morning. And uh, trying to get an early start to beat the heat. So welcome to all of you. I am on this brand new uh, 2022 BMW K1600 GTL. This is the fourth day. I've put over a thousand miles, I think. I think I've already put over a thousand miles on the bike. I'm get, starting to get a feel for this motorcycle. And I'm anxious to get it back to the uh, back to the garage, back to the studio, and uh, get it cleaned up. I've got a lot of uh, <laughs> road, you know, bug guts and stuff all over the bike, so I'd like to get it cleaned up a little bit before I do my review. I would like to take a second to let you know, just to remind you that uh, BMW did uh, loan me this bike to review for, this, uh, for these series of videos. But BMW did not sponsor the videos. They're not paying me to do a review. They just simply loaned me the motorcycle. I have to. Ret I don't get to keep the motorcycle. Don't please. Don't think that. <laughs> I wish. Uh, no, I have to return this to a, a dealer in the uh, Dallas Fort Worth area. So uh, the bike is only mine for a temporary period of time, just to, to review and test. So they're not the sponsors of this video, but I do have a sponsor for this video, and that is Lidlocks. Thank you, Lidlocks, for sponsoring these BMW K1600 videos. What do you do with your helmet when you park your bike at a restaurant or at a bike event or even at a friend's house? If you're riding a BMW K1600 like this one, you got a nice big fat top box where you can put the helmet and lock it away. Of course, that's assuming you don't have it all packed with other gear for a road trip. What do you do if you ride a bike that doesn't have a top box? Lidlock Helmet Locks offers a safe, secure, and simple solution. You can install Lidlock's Helmet Locks on just about any motorcycle, like I've done on this 2022 BMW K1600 GTL. Installation took less than 10 minutes. I did it in a hotel parking lot. And to lock up my helmet, I simply slipped this helmet hanger through the D-ring on my helmet, insert it into the lid lock's body, and press that lock button. That helmet ain't going anywhere until I unlock it with the provided key. Oh, and by the way, I have had lid locks on my 2018 Goldwing for several years. So check out lidlocks.com. So one thing I wanted to talk about today, oh, and by the way, uh, before I get started, I know a lot of you uh, BMW enthusiasts have been watching these videos as well as Goldwing enthusiasts, and also a lot of uh, uh, just riders in general who are maybe considering one of the two motorcycles. And as I, as I mentioned in previous videos, I will be doing a thorough review of this bike, as well as a comparison between this bike and the Goldwing. I feel like I'm somewhat qualified to do that. But to be fair to BMW, uh, they wanted me to have enough seat time on this bike to be able to do a fair 
review and comparison. And I will be fair and I will be totally honest. I'm going to tell you exactly what I like about this motorcycle, what I love about this motorcycle, what I'm not crazy about on this motorcycle, and some things I hate about this motorcycle. So you want to make sure you subscribe to this channel. Click that little subscribe button down below. And don't forget that notification bell so that YouTube will notify you when I come out with these new videos. I don't care what bike you ride. If you're passionate about motorcycling, we want you to be part of this channel. And... Um, One thing I did want to mention is that many of you have noticed I this is a little bit of a departure from my normal motovlogs in that normally I have a second camera that's looking back at me. Uh, we call that multicam. Uh, but I have not figured out yet how to safely secure a camera to this BMW because I don't want to risk you know, obviously don't want to risk doing any damage to the handlebars or any of the other parts of the bike. So I have not come up with a, a way to mount a rear-facing camera yet to be able to do a multi-cam view. So that's why you're only getting this one straight-ahead view of me riding the bike. Man, look at that sunrise. Pretty amazing, isn't it? I've also uh, had a few questions uh, posted about the, these videos. Uh, one question was about what gear am I riding on this road trip? So I'm gonna go head to toe and tell you everything I'm wearing. Uh, we'll start at the top. I'm wearing my HJC IS Max 2 helmet, which unfortunately I dropped the second day and broke the sunshade so I have to buy a new helmet I think that's going to be my thumbnail for the for this video is that sunrise that's amazing get the little rays coming off the clouds so working my way down I've got on my Olympia air glide 4 jacket but I removed the Olympia armor and I have replaced it with the Bond level two armor. I feel it's superior, it's uh, lighter, it's more flexible. I just think it's a better solution. So I'm really happy with my Bond armor. Okay, going down, oh, underneath the jacket, I've got on a twisted core, it's a long sleeve twisted core compression shirt, which is like a cooling material shirt, and it really does make a difference in hot weather. They don't make, twisted cores no longer in business, unfortunately, but they do sell these undergarments that will cool you in the summer. Uh, I know they sell them at Costco, and I've been meaning to buy a set and try it, see if it's the same uh, effectiveness, but this twisted core shirt that I'm wearing, it fits really skin tight, and it honestly does keep you cooler when you're riding in the heat. Okay, let's get down to my pants. I'm wearing a pair of Wrangler jeans. Ah, but underneath those jeans, what am I wearing? I uh, don't, there's nothing perverted. I'm wearing the Bond Armor undergarment lowers that have on, have all the pads, the Bond Armor level two pads in the knees, the hips, tailbone. And this is their, uh, you know, I don't remember their name for it. I always call it, it's like a really sheer, uh, cool mesh. It's, it's, you can see right through it. And it's super, super cool for riding in the summer. You don't even know you have it on. And the armor is so flexible and soft uh, that, you know, it just, it's not painful to wear. 
I debated whether or not to bring my my mesh riding pants. I kind of wish now I had them because I didn't realize it was going to be this hot. But these uh, Wrangler jeans with the Bond Armor undergarment have, it's been tolerable. It's been okay. I also have on my Tour Master. I'll put the name on the screen of the uh, model number or the model name of the boots I'm wearing. I don't remember it off the top of my head. But it's a it's a touring riding boot. And I'm wearing my built BILT built gloves from Cycle Gear that uh, are leather, but they do have some holes in them for ventilation. And I like the white because I think it kind of reflects the sun. It kind of, I think, I think they're a little cooler than black gloves. And I've, I've been wearing these gloves for a long time. They've really lasted. I don't know the name of the gloves. If I find it, I'll put it on the screen for you. So that's my gear. The only other thing I wish I probably had on this type of a road trip that would have really been a benefit to me would have been a Camelback hydration pack where I could just reach around with a tube and take a drink of water because I have to pull over literally uh, every 45 minutes to an hour to drink water because it's been that hot. Now in the mornings it's cool enough, right now it's 82 degrees, it's really not bad. And it's not that humid yet, it will be as I get closer to Dallas. And I know yesterday the, my temperature got up to 106 yesterday. And I was literally stopping, sometimes after 30, 45 minutes I would stop just to take a drink of water. I had a chance to see all four of the new K1600 models. There's a, a K1600B, there is a, which is a bagger model. I think it's kind of like the bagger model of the Grand America. I'm not sure about that. Still not that familiar with everything. There's the GT, which is the bagger version of this bike. And then, of course, there's the uh, Grand America, which is their kind of, uh, God, I don't know, I don't know how you describe it, but it has more of a foot forward, you know, where you have the foot boards, and boy, they're just some beautiful, really beautiful bikes, beautiful paint jobs, and uh, some, it's really, as you can see my head moving, it's already starting to get really windy, I'm getting that that wind out of the south. It's probably only about 15, 20 miles an hour right now, but trust me, by the end of the day, it's going to be 30, 35 mile an hour gusts. This bike does have, if you fill the tank up, I think it's got a six and a half to seven gallon tank. It's got a pretty good sized tank. And I filled it up yesterday, and I think the computer said it had a range of like 274 miles. So that's a pretty good range. early indications are that this motorcycle the way I ride which is you know me I'm pretty conservative um, gets pretty good mileage it, it gets good gas mileage now it's using premium fuel so there's an expense there but we'll talk more about that in the review portion in the review video well, I just got uh, gas here in Sweetwater, Texas. I'm getting ready to get back on the road. Right now it's about 86 degrees, so the temperature is holding pretty decent. But the um, wind has been an issue on the highway. And there's been a lot of road construction on Interstate 20, which makes it no fun.
it's about uh, 10 after 8 in the morning and now when I'm on the road it's up to 91 degrees I'm not sure why I'm getting this navigation I think my phone is still trying to communicate to the bike I'm gonna I may have to pull over again and turn that off I don't know how to turn it off you pair your phone with Bluetooth to the motorcycle and if you're going to be using the navigation uh, you you actually connect to the bike has a Wi-Fi uh, it has its own Wi-Fi uh, hotspot so you communicate both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to the bike and when you connect with Bluetooth it asks you you know the bike will ask you if or your phone will ask you do you want to allow it to have access to your contacts and that allows you to place a phone call from the motorcycle there's a menu system that lets you see your contact list and you can make a phone call um, you know using the motorcycle interface but it you're talking through the uh, Bluetooth headset in my case it's the Senna 50C communicator. And I did test that this morning. I called Don uh, just to see how, the, uh, how it would work. And it worked beautifully. He said he could hear me crystal clear in spite of the fact that there's a lot of background noise with the wind and the traffic and all that. And I was able to hear him. So uh, the phone call worked fine. That feature that's in the bike and which is also part of the communicator and your uh, cell phone itself. I have an iPhone 13 Pro. Well, I made it back to Dallas Fort Worth. As you can see, I'm in the uh, hellish traffic of North Dallas. I'm probably 10 minutes away from my house. It is 101 degrees. A little uh, actually a little cooler than yesterday but much more humid so I had to stop uh, a few times take a drink cool off stretch my legs I do want to thank all of you for watching this video and for watching this series of videos and if you've enjoyed the video or this series of videos please take a second to click that like button uh, really does help out the channel of course we'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe as well we'd love to have you as part of the family and don't forget to watch for my upcoming full review of this BMW so until then I'll just uh, I'll let you see some scenes of me going home and I'll tell you to always ride safe